Do you know I got a letter from one of Danny's teachers today? How's, uh, how's Danny doing? Great. Great. He's starting to write. Not a lot, but the teacher said he's making amazing progress. And I just, I wanted to thank you, because I never could have sent him Sam, if it weren't Sam, for you, and... Sam, stop thanking me about Danny. I like him. Well, I was thinking that once the baby gets here, maybe you, me, and the baby could go visit him. And I know Hawaii's a long flight, but I was just, you know, Danny really wants to see her, and I think it would... Don't, you know, babies have to be a certain age before they fly? I don't know. You know I don't know. I'll, I'll put it on my list of things to ask Dr. Meadows, but if she says yes, what do you say? I, you know, I probably... Don't, please don't say you have to work. Come on. Say you'll come with us. Okay. Okay. Promise? Yeah, I promise. So it's the best place you've ever been? I don't know. I never really thought about it. Well, think about it now. Come on, you've traveled all over the place. Where'd you like the best? Uh, I'd say, um... The best place I've traveled is not the best place I've been. All right, I need to hear about this. That sounds spiritual. Well, when Michael was a baby, um, Sonny was gone. I was living in his place, and I used to just stand with Michael, looking out the window and just talking to him until he fell asleep. Talking to him about what? Uh, anything. Um, traveling. Boats, what the park looked like in the summer. I mean, obviously, he didn't care what I said. He just needed to hear my voice and feel me holding him. After a while, he'd, uh, he'd fall asleep, and I would just stand there with him, listening to him breathe, knowing he felt safe. That's the best place I've ever been. If you think about it, in a couple of weeks, you'll be holding her, talking to her. And that should be interesting, huh? Hearing you talk for a change. Well, babies have different personalities. Maybe she'll want to hear your horrible singing. Oh, no, I am not. Well, she wants to hear me sing. I will sing. I want her to have everything. Jason, I wonder if I have lullabies and soccer practices, slumber parties, horseback riding lessons, you know, everything that I never had. And from now on, that's what my life is about. Just bringing up a happy child. Now, listen, I can't believe I'm actually saying this, but I am so excited to have this baby. And I don't mean just to have her and just have her here. I'm at the actual birth itself. Mm. I don't know. Maybe it's my hormones. Maybe it's all the birthing classes. Okay, well, maybe, but you have to at least go once with me if you're going to be there in the delivery I, you know, room. I still no, think don't I... say Emily, please. I'm begging you. You got to do it. You got to be there. Unless, of course, you're scared. That I... Scared of what? I don't know. I have to do all the work. It's not but like if I... I need to speak to both of you in private about the baby. Percent risk to our child, at minimum, if I agree to induce the labor, correct? Yeah, there's a hundred percent chance that Christina will die if she doesn't get those out. Jason, what do you think? If it were my own life, I would take ten percent risk to save Christina. to put risk on a baby that isn't even born yet. Sam, I, I don't know. I do not know what I would do, but I will support whatever you decide. 
There's no other option for Christina? No. No. I want to help Christina. But 10%, Sunny, 10% is too big of risk to take. I have to protect our daughter. Sorry. I can't agree to induce the labor. I'm so sorry.